How's it going everyone? Welcome to the Always Up Too Late channel. My name is Jonathan and today we have a high level garage update. It's been a little while since I've had a chance to upload so I wanted to go over the current state of projects that I have in my garage and also highlight things that are yet to come and the videos that are going to be coming out in the very near future. And one of those things being why I happen to have two year correct and color matched color correct doors for a Super Duty. I do have some footage of when I got these doors. It's from a little while ago, so it's like snowy out. It's not snowy right now, but I just haven't had a chance to edit it. So I'm gonna edit that and put that together and go into more detail of why I actually have those doors. Standing behind me, I'm actually not sure if they've been in videos or not. Uh, I think that they definitely deserve an explanation. So I will, I will go into that more in depth uh, in the very near future. And probably the next thing that we'll look at is the newest addition to the garage. I bought a John Deere X530. I found this not too long ago. Uh, actually within this week I, I found this at a local dealership and it's a, it's a, it was a really good buy it was a good deal it's 2012 it has the 54 inch uh, edge deck on it and as you can see it's a little a little grassy and dirty because we did some mowing today with it. I, I mean, I'm really happy with this thing so far. It's it's pretty nice. It's got the hydrostatic forward reverse and the hydraulic uh, deck raising and lifting thing and power steering and all that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty nice. It definitely needs some cleanup work. Like, I mean, the hood needs cleaned and there's some like stuff in it. And if you look inside it, like the headlights, you can see that, I mean, that is one thing that John Deere doesn't do with these is they, they don't seal these. So you end up with getting some dust and dirt and stuff in there. So just got to take this off and clean that up and everything. And I was joking around earlier with a friend of mine about how I realized that I'm starting to get older. And one way is definitely that I'm excited that I bought a lawnmower. But I mean, there is a little bit of a backstory there and that for the last quite, quite a while, I've been using one of the $150 Walmart push mowers and uh, uh, you know, it's just, it just takes forever and everything. But we have a slightly bigger yard than we used to, and you know, I found this for a good deal. And yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited to, to own a lawnmower. I've never owned one before, so that's it's a new adventure for me. I don't think there's like that many things to do to it. I don't know, I may throw some LEDs in the headlights or something like that. Maybe go through some like cleanup and some of the rust, uh, rust preventative stuff that I'm gonna do to uh, make sure that this thing lasts for quite a long time. And moving right on down the line, this is my 2010 W204. I have talked about this a little bit on the channel, but I haven't really done any of the mods on camera, uh, mainly because, you know, I really uh, just wanted to get them done and get this looking the way that I, I want it to. But since the last time I talked about it on the channel, I did do the uh, black housing headlights. I'm a huge fan of those. I think those are, those are uh, exactly what was needed on this car. It looks really nice when it turns on. So you can see that it's full LED and LEDs up here and then the LED running lights and everything. But for the most part, it's, you know, I, I try to keep it looking a lot like a factory car, but slightly modified. I mean, the, I did LED conversion inside and everything, but you can't really see it because I have a 5% window tent all the way around. Makes it a lot of fun to try to back this thing up at night, but I think that it just looks I think that looks nice. And as I said, I haven't done most of the stuff on camera, but I did very recently add the C63 steering wheel with the AMG paddle shifters there. The car didn't have it from factory, but it was wired for it. So this was this was pretty cool. And I did actually get a video of, of swapping out the steering wheel and I'll edit that and get that up. And as you can see, I also have some new trim pieces for the W204. This is a rear trunk spoiler and this is a rear window spoiler. I was just checking them out and looking at the mounting process and how they were gonna look on there, but they're color matched to the 040 color code of the car. And they're they're built pretty well, they're pretty nice. So I mean, they're, they're purely aesthetic because it's not really a performance car, but I think that it will improve the, the overall look and everything. So we'll see how that turns out. And the F-250 is still doing its thing out there. Starting to lose some daylight and everything, but I mean, we can still kind of see it. Still sitting on the 375s, the 12-inch uh, wide wheels, huge fan of those. I also have an LED conversion in here. The, the dome lights in here are quite nice and bright. You can see, maybe. Can't really see, but it has 180,000 on it. Oh, that's super annoying. I did do the LED 
dash light conversion and I started to put together a video about it, but I'm actually not a huge fan of it yet. I'm, I'm not super happy with it, so I'm going to pull the dash out and redo some of this lighting stuff and then I'll finish up that video and I'll get that posted to you. And I feel like we haven't done anything to the F-250 in quite a while, so we're just going to go ahead and address this problem that I have here where this thing is broken. Pretty straightforward to get these plugs out. There's just a tab, comes out like that. This one is the same way. Okay, and then you gotta get the front, okay, the front piece is out. So this broke quite a while ago and it wasn't really hurting anything. This one is gray though, not black. Eh, no, I think we'll just, I mean, we'll just go with it, it's fine. But then we just gotta get the switches out. How, how do we get the switches out here? Oh, that looks like they have push in things. Be able to get that out of there. There we go. Okay, we got the one switch out, put it up and down. Gotta get this one out. Can't really see what I'm doing, but I don't have the right tools. I'm using a pocket knife to try to pry this thing out here. There we go. Okay, so we have the new one here, and we're just gonna pop these uh, switches into the new one. I think they just kind of snap in. Yeah, they just snap in. Oh, don't want to put that in upside down. Okay, so we got our new switches installed, and we'll just... We plug these back in here, slide this in at the back, and there we go. All right, so that looks pretty good. It's not all hanging and busted and rattling and making noise, so there we go. Did an update to the F-250. All right, and moving right along, you can see this is the oldest vehicle that I have. And I do believe it's also the biggest engine. This is the 8.0 V10 engine. It's a 1996 second gen. We're on definitely losing light here, but try to get some good angles of it. You can see that it's actually in pretty decent shape. This side is not rusted out. Let me see if I can fix the ISO here. Hey, there we go. Okay, so as you can see, I mean, the, this side isn't rusted out. It actually is pretty solid. I mean, there's some dents and dings across the bed here. Tailgate has this thing where if you don't push this latch forward like that, the tailgate will fall down at random intervals. It's quite exciting. You can kind of see this is destroyed back here. This is crunched in and everything. And But I think the, the worst part of this truck currently for rust and stuff is is down here at the bottom of this door, this passenger side door. Right here is just kind of rusted right all along there. I think that that's, uh, it's definitely gotten worse in the time that I've had it. Coming around to the front, pretty standard. I mean, pretty standard uh, second gen, pretty nice. I think there were some like, some like rust spots back here, yeah. It's like kind of paint missing on top and everything. And then that corner right there is pretty dented in, if I remember correctly. I think that's where uh, this got backed into a tree at one point in time and it busted out the back window and everything. So we beat the top of that cab corner back out so that way we get a window put back in it and everything. All right, let's see if this thing's... Oh, it is unlocked. That's kind of what I imagined it would be. Okay, yeah, you can see it has 183,000 miles on the V10. Uh, the inside, it's... Uh... It's okay. I mean, it's it's pretty good for how old the truck is and everything. I mean, everything's decent in shape and everything, but the, this has the typical Dodge, like, cracked dash thing going on and cup holders missing and everything. But overall, I mean, this is a really good truck. And I mean, especially for what we use it for. I mean, right now we're hauling brush and everything. This is generally the truck that we'll use when we haul brush and, and uh, things where we're going to be throwing it. And it has chances of hitting the bedside and everything. Usually this one is reserved for actually like pulling things and, and doing like real heavy work. And this one is the one that we use uh, when, you know, it has high, high chances of getting scratched. Or, or new dents or something because it already is pretty much, you know, it's got dents and stuff all over it. So that's kind of the use case for this truck itself. And this one, of course, this is the Honda Civic. It's a 2004 Honda Civic. And I don't have a ton of driveway space to park all of these projects. And my neighbor is, is uh, nice enough to let me park that one right over there until we get around to that. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do with it yet but uh, I don't have a ton of money in that car. It just, uh, it's just there for right now, but I will eventually get around to doing something with this one. And you may or may not know that I did at one point in time own a 2005 Excursion. It was a 6.0 Power Stroke. It was a Limited, so it had all leather seats and it was black on black and had the black grills and everything. I do quite miss that car, but unfortunately it was in an accident, a uh, pretty nasty accident actually, but everyone was okay, everyone walked away, so that's, you know, that's all that really matters. Being in that, 
my wife did actually purchase something to replace it as well. And I haven't really talked about it because it's, I mean, it's her car and being that the, the last car was part of my YouTube channel and she really didn't like that she had been in an accident with something that was gonna be a project of mine and something that I was gonna work on. So she asked me to leave her car alone. I still did some stuff to it and I have some videos and everything that I'll put together uh, just because I can't leave anything alone to start with. Like I, I'm just not going to, I'm gonna, modify it in some way, uh, almost, almost always. But this is what she got to replace it. It is a 2016 GL450, four door SUV, pretty big, third row and everything and all the features that uh, you would expect from a Mercedes. She really likes it. It's got the lighting package, auto folding mirrors, like all that good, uh, good stuff. And not that I think SUVs are necessarily as cool as the F-250, it is sometimes behind me in the garage. So I just want to let you all know, you know, what, what vehicles are in the garage and, and what's really going on and, and stuff that I'm working on or, or, you know, why there's a weird SUV that no one has ever seen and I've never addressed or talked about on the channel. I am still looking into 6.0 power strokes. I haven't quite decided what to do or, or where to go. I mean, I think right now, I pretty much just wanna keep building the F-250 and doing cool stuff to it at this point in time. And if I happen upon a 6.0 and it's the right circumstances and the price is right and, and you know the stars line and all of that, then I'll probably jump on that. But until I'm done with the F-250, I probably won't have a 6.0. But again, I mean, deals always come up and I'm always checking Craigslist and Auto Trader for various things and various projects. So if something aligns, I will definitely add that to the channel as well. I mean, I think, you know, I do have quite a few motors and, and vehicles right now that are projects that I really need to be working on and, and sorting things out. So in short, I will be coming out with a fair amount of F-250 content in the very near future. Some car stuff, some W204 stuff, gonna be working on the lawnmower as well. I don't think there's much to do to the Dodge. I did have a cam sensor go out not too long ago and we ended up getting that replaced because I was out of town when it, when it went out. Oh yeah, and then the Civic stuff. So yeah, I think there's gonna be a lot of F-250 content coming out in the near future and just some like mixed bag stuff. I, you know, I may throw in a, a car video or maybe I'm just messing around with the lawnmower and stuff, I, I'd really like to be uploading at a much more frequent rate because that means that I'm getting projects done and I'm accomplishing things and also getting to interact with all of you. So thank you very much for stopping in this evening. I believe that we're gonna wrap this video here. If you enjoyed it, please thumbs up and I hope to see you all in the next video.